Fairly tall, short brown hair. Miss Lewis has short brown hair, doesn't she? Hi, Joe. Boy, Frank. You know that bus driver we wanted to talk to, the one that drove the bus for Dorothy Miller and the baby came in on yesterday? Yeah. Well, he came out to see us. He's in the next room. I've been talking to him. Mm -hmm. You saw this answer from Tucson. Yeah. I think we got the tie-in. How's that? That description Mrs. Lewis gave us to Dorothy Miller. The driver doesn't remember anyone like that on his bus. He remembered Mrs. Lewis, though. She didn't get on the bus at Dallas. She didn't sit next to a young girl with a baby, either. The driver says he's sure of it. Well, then what's the pitch? Mrs. Lewis got on the bus to Tucson. She had a baby in her arms. <laughs> A.M. Frank Smith and I continued to interview the bus driver, the same man who'd been driving the bus on which Mrs. Lewis and the abandoned baby and his mother supposedly had arrived in Los Angeles the day before. The more we talked to the driver, the more he convinced us that the story we'd gotten from Mrs. Marjorie Lewis was a long way from the truth. He repeated that he was absolutely sure that Mrs. Lewis did not get on the bus at Dallas, that she boarded the bus at Tucson, and at the time she got on, she was holding a baby in her arms. He was just as positive that Mrs. Lewis held the baby in her arms all the way into Los Angeles and that she did not sit next to a young red-haired girl, but an elderly woman. He also told us that none of his passengers on that particular trip fitted the description of Dorothy Miller as given us by Mrs. Lewis. 8.50 a.m. Before the bus driver left, we got his address and a phone number where we could get in touch with him if necessary. 9.05 a.m., Frank and I got in the car, drove to the downtown hotel where Mrs. Lewis was staying. She told us that her husband, Army Captain Walter Lewis, had arrived in from overseas earlier that morning and checked in at the hotel, that he was downstairs in the hotel barber shop. That's quite a parade they're having down there. Yes, ma'am. Well, how's the baby? Are they taking care of him? Is he all right? Yes, ma'am. We checked to the hospital. He's doing fine. Oh, I'm glad. And the Miller girl, Dorothy Miller, did you find out anything? We haven't been able to locate her. No trace of her at all. That's why we're here, Mrs. Lewis. There are a few things we'd like to have you straighten out for us. Well, I'll be glad to do anything I can to help. I think I already told you everything I know about the girl. We'll be honest with you, Ms. Lewis. We don't think you're telling us the truth. What? I don't understand. We talked to the man who was driving the bus you came in on yesterday. The same bus you say Dorothy Miller and her baby were on. Yes, that's right. Well, the bus driver couldn't remember the Miller girl, told us none of his passengers even came close to her description. Well, there was quite a few people on the bus. I guess you can't blame him for not remembering it. He remembered you, Mrs. Lewis. You were sitting near the front of the bus. He doesn't remember anyone with a baby sitting next to you, though. I guess he made a mistake. He can't remember everything. He said you were holding the baby. I don't understand this. What is it you're trying to find out? When we talked to you yesterday, you told us that you got on the bus at Dallas. Isn't that right? Yes. What would that have to do with it? Well, the bus driver said you got on at Tucson. He seemed to remember it pretty well. Says when he got on the bus, you were holding a baby in your arms. Oh, that's silly. He's wrong. He must have me confused with somebody else. I don't see how, ma'am. He says you were the only woman on the bus with a baby. What's the point of this, Sergeant? I don't understand any of this. Well, now, frankly, Ms. Lewis, neither do we. I don't know why you're lying to us about this, but apparently you are. You're wrong. I'm not lying. It happened just the way I told you. The girl gave me the baby to hold, and then she disappeared. There's no reason for me to lie about that. We found a receipt for a hospital bill in that valise with the baby's things in it. The receipt was made out to Dorothy Miller. Well, that proves it, doesn't it? She was on the bus with you, and her baby was with her. The check was made with a hospital at Tucson. They remembered the name Dorothy Miller. She gave birth to a baby boy about seven weeks ago. She wasn't the same girl you described to us. Description wasn't even close. Then it must be a mistake. I guess somebody made a mistake. I can't understand any of this. They sent us back a description of the Dorothy Miller who stayed at the hospital. Fairly tall woman, short brown hair, about 29 or 30. Yes? Description fits you, Mrs. Lewis. Fits almost perfectly. It's wrong. It has to be wrong. The whole thing's a mistake. No, I don't think so, ma'am. Why don't you tell me? What do you think? Tell me, please. Well, there is no Dorothy Miller. There never was. There's no such person. That's what you really think. I invented it. I made it all up. Did you? The baby. What about him? If there's no Dorothy Miller, what about the baby? I don't know. You want to tell us? Ms. Lewis?
Yes. Mrs. Lewis, anything we can do? Thank you, I'm all right. I suppose I knew it would happen sometime. I tried not to think about it. Yeah? I knew you'd found out. That's why you asked if my husband was with me, isn't it? You didn't want to embarrass me. I wanted to give you a chance to tell your side of the story. I just thought maybe you wanted to keep it from your husband. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'll tell him. He'll be back in a few minutes. He can do anything he wants, and I won't blame him. He'll pack his bag and walk out and leave, and I won't blame him. Nobody will blame him. You want to tell us about it? I think you know. It's my baby. My own baby, and I couldn't keep him. There wasn't anything else to do. Nothing. It's my own baby. She made up the whole story about the girl, Dorothy Miller, for leaving the baby with you. Mrs. Lewis? Well, now, you must have had a reason for it, Mrs. Lewis, giving your baby away. You want to tell us about it? Done was all done. It's my husband I'm thinking about. Oh, it's... I'm going to have to hurt him, and I don't want to hurt him. I don't know how I'm going to tell him. Tell him what, Miss? I love him just like you do. I tried to explain. I didn't want to be alone. Having him away all the time, I knew there was going to be trouble. I knew. I didn't want to be alone, and he didn't understand. He only said I was foolish. Yes, ma'am. He left for overseas in October, almost two years ago. I went down to Wilmington. I saw him leave on the boat. I stood there and watched him go. I wasn't going to see him. I wouldn't go once. I wouldn't see him. No children, no family, just a two-room apartment. If he only believed me, if he only would have taken me with him. Yes, ma'am. I, I took it for a year. A whole year. Two-room apartment, being alone. I wrote to Walter twice a week. And it didn't do any good. He didn't want me with him a whole year. And then it got too much. You mean you should have joined him overseas? He didn't want you to. I don't know why. I kept writing to him, and he kept putting me off a whole year. It's got too much a two-room apartment alone. You can't spend your life that way. I started going out, having dates. I had to get out. I started going to parties, different people. I guess I drank too much. I didn't want to be alone. I guess I always drank too much. Yes, ma'am. There was one party. I don't even remember who I went with. I guess I was drinking. I don't know. When I left, I don't even remember who I was with. It didn't have to be this way. It didn't have to happen like this. Are you all right, Mrs. Lewis? Is there something we can get for you? No, I'm all right. I didn't know what to do when I found out. I saw the doctor. He didn't understand it either. I mean, the way I felt. He said the baby would be born in June. I cried. He didn't understand. Yes, ma'am. When the time came, I went to Tucson, Arizona. They had my baby. At least I wasn't alone. I used a different name at the hospital. Dorothy Miller. Maybe it wasn't Walter's baby. But it was mine. It was mine. 